Hello, this is the moment you've been waiting for, the final video of Math 19661. In this video, I'm just going to give a few additional examples on probability. There's not going to be any new concepts, just a few more examples using what we've already covered. So here's the first example. Let me switch to the visualizer. We imagine that uh, there is a manufacturer and the manufacturer produces some product, and in the tradition of economists, we're going to call the product a uh, what's it. The product is produced by two different machines, either machine X or machine Y, and some of the what's it's that are produced are defective, not properly manufactured. And what we're interested in is uh, studying the chances that what's it's are defective, given that they've been manufactured either by machine X or machine Y. So let's consider how we can translate the information which is given in the statement of the problem into the language of probability that we've been studying. So first of all, let's think what would be the sample space that we should consider here? Well, what we want to do is we want to select a random what's it from all the what's it's that are manufactured and then look at its properties. So the sample space is the set of all what's it's that are manufactured. Okay, and the experiment we do is we select a random what's it and look at whether it's defective and which machine manufactured that what's it. Okay, so what are some of the events that we should consider? So the events that are relevant for this problem are, first of all, the event which I'll call D, in which the what's it we select is defective. Okay, then the other event that is relevant here is the event which I will call X for machine X, which is that the what's it we select was manufactured by machine X. Okay, so these are the two events that we'll consider. And the question gives us some information about the probability of these events. So first of all, the question says that overall, 20% of what sits are found to be defective. So that means the prob probability that a randomly selected what sit is defective is 20% or 0 0.2. Okay, that's the first piece of information. Then it says of these, 40% are produced by machine X. All right, so this is giving us a conditional probability. It's saying that of the defective what-sits, 40% are produced by machine X. So that's the probability that a what-sit is produced by machine X given that it's defective. That is 0 0.4, 40%. All right, then the last piece of information is that X produces 45% of the what-sits. So that means if we take a random what's it, the probability it was produced by machine X is 0 0.45. Right. This is all the information that we have, and we want to determine the probability that a what's it is defective if it comes from machine X. So we want to find, I want to determine Conditional probability that a what's it is defective given that it was made by machine X. So the conditional probability the other way around. All right, so let's first of all write down the definition of this conditional probability. This is the probability of D and X, the what's it is defective and manufactured by machine X, divided by the probability the what's it was manufactured by machine X. Okay, well, we're not given this probability on top. We have the probability that it was manufactured by machine X, but we don't immediately have the probability of D and X. However, we can determine that from the information that we're given. And how can we do that? Well, let's uh, write down the multiplication rule for the conditional probability of X given D. Now, the multiplication rule would say, that the probability of D times the probability of X given D 
is equal to the probability of d and x. All right, remember this was an immediate consequence of the definition of conditional probability. And then we can plug that into the previous equation. So plug it in for the probability of d and x here and get that this is the probability of d times the probability of x given d divided by the probability of x. All right, so these are the three quantities that we have. And therefore, we can put these numbers into this equation and immediately calculate the probability that a Watson is defective given it was produced by machine X. So probability that the Watson is defective given it was produced by machine X is the probability of D, 0 0.2, probability that any Watson is defective, times the probability that it was produced by machine X given it's defective, which is 0 0.4, divided by the probability it was produced by machine X, which is 0 0.45. Okay, and if you uh, put these into your calculator, you get that this is approximately 0 0.177. So the uh, probability that a Watson is defective given it was produced by machine X is approximately 17.7%. All right, so this is the solution of the first example. All right, we're going to look at one more example. As I said, two examples in this last video. And this is an example, second example is a more sophisticated example about a coin flipping problem. So we imagine we flip a coin four times and record the results. That's the experiment. And in this case, the coin is not evenly weighted. It's not fair. So it's slightly more likely of getting tails. There's 45% chance of getting heads on each flip and 55% chance of getting tails. And what we want to do is calculate the probability of getting at least two heads out of four flips using this unfair coin. All right, so the sample space in this case is a set of all possible sequences of four flips. I won't write them all down because, uh, well, there would be two, for, there would be 16, a little bit more much to write down. Now, the sample space would be the set of all possible sets of four flips, so heads, 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 tails, and so on, so all possible lists of four flips. <clears throat> and uh, what do we know? So let's, well, let's talk about some of the events first. Uh, similar to some of the notation I used last time, I'm going to Label H with a subscript I, well, I is one's number between one and four, to be the event where we get uh, heads on the ith flip. So heads on the ith flip. So I is either one, two, three, or four. And T with a subscript I to be similarly the event where we get tails on the ith flip. Okay, and so the information we're given about this unfair coin tells us what the probability of HI and TI is for all I, right? So the probability of getting heads on the I flip is 0 0.45. Probability of getting tails on the I flip has to be 1 minus 0 0.45 because probability of getting heads plus the probability of getting tails on the I flip has to add to 1. So probability of getting tails on the i flip have to be 0 0.55. Okay, so we know this. And the event we want to study and find the probability for is the event getting at least two heads. All right, so let me write down all the outcomes where have at least two heads. So the event we want to look at, at least two heads, we'll call it E. And what are all the outcomes in that event? All right, so first of all, we can get all heads, all four heads. Then there's a four events where we get one tail. That's the tail can be in any one of the four flips. So head and tail.
And so those are all the outcomes where we get three heads and one tails. And then there are six outcomes where we get two heads and two tails. And so let me heads, heads, tails, tails. Heads, tails, heads, tails. Tails, heads, heads, tails. Those are all where there would be a tail in the last position. And then uh, heads, tails, tails. Sorry, I meant to say heads, tails, tails, heads. Uh, tails, heads, tails, heads. And then tails, tails, heads, heads. All right, so these are all the outcomes where we would get at least two heads. There's one where we get all four heads. There are four where we get three heads and one tails. And then there are six where we get two heads and two tails. All right, and so let's consider what would be the probability of each one of these outcomes in this event, and then we'll add them together in order to get the probability of the event, because each of the individual outcomes are mutually disjoint from all the others. So we get the probability of E by adding the probability of each of the outcomes together. All right, so let's first consider what would be the probability of this outcome where we get four heads. The probability of heads, 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 all four heads. That's the probability of getting heads on the first roll or first flip and heads on the second flip and heads on the third flip and heads on the fourth. Okay, now each of the flips are independent, and so that means that this probability of H1 and H2 and H3 and H4 is the product of the probabilities of the individual flips. So getting heads on the individual flips. So it's the probability of getting heads on first flip times the probability of getting heads on the second times the probability of getting heads on the third times the probability of getting heads on the fourth. And those are all the same. 0 0.45 as we're told in the question and so the prob probability of getting four heads is 0 0.45 to the fourth power and if we put that into our calculator uh, that is approximately 0 0.041 a little more than four percent chance of getting all four heads okay that's the prob this outcome and now we're going to use the same method to figure out the probability of all the other outcomes. And as you can see, since each of the flips are independent, what we're going to end up getting is just the, pro the product of the probability of getting either heads or tails on each of the flips. That means all the outcomes where there are three heads and one tail will have the same probability. So we only need to compute the probability of one of those. And the other outcomes where there are three heads and one tail will have the same probability. So the probability of getting, say, heads, 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 tails, is the probability of getting heads on the first, and heads on the second, and heads on the third, and tails on the fourth. All right, and that's the probability of getting heads on the first, times the probability of getting heads on the second, times the probability of getting heads on the third, times the probability of getting tails on the fourth. And so let me not write this step of writing it all out. So we would have 0 0.45 to the third. That's the probability of getting heads on each of the flips multiplied together, times probability of getting tails on the fourth, which is 0 0.55. All right, and uh, so if we multiply all those together, again, using a calculator, that would be approximately 0 0.050, rounding to three decimal places. Okay, now we only need to figure out one more thing because all of the uh, outcomes where we have two heads and two tails also would have the same probability. And so let's figure out the probability of all of those all together. Probability of, for example, heads, hands, tails, tails is, uh, well, the probability of heads on the first and heads on the second and tails on the third and tails on the fourth. And so uh, that's the probability of these uh, heads and tails on the individual flips multiplied together because each of the flips is independent. And so it's 
0 0.45 squared, because there's two heads, and the probability of heads on each is 0 0.45, times 0 0.55 squared. That's the probability of getting tails on each flip squared. And finally, we put that into the calculator as well, and that would be uh, approximately 0 0.061. And so now we have really all the information we need in order to calculate the probability of this event. Remember, there was one outcome where there are four heads, four outcomes where there were three heads, and six outcomes where there were two heads. <clears throat> and so that means the probability of E will be, well, the probability of getting uh, all four heads, this one, plus four times the probability of getting three heads, 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 tails, because uh, there were four of those kind of outcomes where we got three heads, probability, uh, four times the probability of heads, 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 tails, and then six times the probability of getting two heads and two tails. <clears throat> Okay, and so we have these numbers, 0 0.041 for the first one, plus 4 times 0 0.050, plus 6 times 0 0.061, and if you put that into the calculator as well, you get that this is approximately 0 0.609. Right, and so the probability of getting at least two heads is about 60.9%, uh, 0 0.609. Okay, that's the end of that example. Just a, a bit more complicated example about coin flipping. This type of uh, calculation, uh, where we have an event that ha uh, has only two outcomes and you repeat it uh, in an independent way, we get a what is called a binomial distribution, which is something that we study would study in uh, more advanced statistics. And so, uh, just giving a bit of a view of uh, what the more advanced applications of what we've been studying. Right, that's everything. So I hope you have a good break. And of course, uh, please let me know if you do have any questions in advance of the uh, exam in January.